Alright guys, welcome back to another video. Um, today I thought I'd actually take you through the uh, test stand um, and show you where it exactly it is in the design and what we've kind of changed over the past few weeks and what we're still kind of looking forward to changing um, in the future. Or in pretty much things that, uh, that we've done that we just need to continue doing or that um, we didn't really address too, too much in the TRR um, and then that we need to really, really work on. So I guess first of all right here, this is kind of the overall test stand um, with all the added piping. Um, this is not all of mine. Um, I didn't do the piping. This was done by Ryan. He did actually a great job on this. Um, but essentially you can do very similar things if you look at my uh, the piping and flanging tutorial uh, for the test tanks. Um, doing similar processes will get you something like this. Um, so just keep that in mind if, if you're curious as to how he made these actual tubing itself. Um, but actually going on forward, I guess I might as well describe the test stand as a whole. So pretty much there are a few main, main, com uh, main components. Um, and so here's our drawing with our, um, uh, our big dimensions, pretty much where everything's going to be placed. But essentially it's made in nine pieces more or less, or nine big sub-assemblies. Uh, the first one being the trailer, this part um, with the floor and the um, and some um, reinforcements. You can actually see them through the floor here. Um, these these are cross beams that actually uh, are welded in second hand by uh, two by two beams that are kind of welded in there to um, make everything stronger. And you can actually see those here because. And this is based off of a uh, six, Big Tech 60 PI trailer. It's about 12 feet long and 6 to 7 feet wide. Um, but if you have any questions about that, it's all in the drawing right here. It'll tell you exactly what it is. Um, but essentially, so we have that trailer that we're going to buy and then rip out the floorboards and then reinforce with some steel 2x2s. Two um, make it much stronger so that we can, so we can actually withstand some of these forces that we're going to be putting on it. Um, the next thing that there is is this frame that you see here, which is actually this part right here, and it's kind of where all the piping um, and the sensors and stuff gets mounted to. Um, this is very preliminary. Um, I did some analysis. It will survive transport, um, but the vibrational um, loads on this guy or the vibrational modes on this guy aren't don't seem too good. They're very, very low. So what we're probably going to have to do is add some kind of um, crossbar here, add some reinf like diagonal pieces here and here, and just brace all the corners in general to try and stiffen up the structure. So then that way we know it won't actually shake itself apart once we fire this engine here. Um, next part really is, oops, uh, over here. Three is the fuel tank assembly, which is the smaller guy right here on the right-hand side. Um, that's going to be holding our Jet A. Um, and all the pipes coming out of that are all the Jet A related piping and tubing. Um, number four here is our liquid oxygen tank. It's a little taller, um, but we're going to need more of the liquid oxygen, so that's why. Um, and if you're curious more about the tank, just uh, look into the TRR. Um, there's going to be more information on the thickness and the analysis and all that. Um, so I'll probably. You know what, um, yeah, I'll, I'll show you guys where that is at the, at the very end um, in case you're curious and want to read more about it. Um, but if otherwise, if you're curious on how to make the tanks, I've done a video very similar to these. So just go ahead and click that, um, and you, you'll have an understanding how we made that. Um, as for the thrust structure, the thrust structure is actually this piece right here. It's kind of it's hard to see in this drawing here, but it's actually this piece right here. Um, so this is the main load bearing um, part of the the stand where essentially um, the engine sled right here which is mounted to the engine um, are on some linear rails that get pushed into a load cell to measure the the thrust and this um, structure is kind of just meant to hold it back and it's actually separated into two parts there's this bottom half right here which is kind of just a giant rectangle um, and then you have this top half which is kind of like this L um, structure here and the importance of this is that we can actually move this part back and forth how, uh, however we want so then if we ever end up having a bigger engines or we need or, or smaller engines or anything we can always move this uh, section back or forward and um, I might be able to drag it no I can't 
Um, the things I, I've set it particularly to be mounted through these holes, uh, these linear tapped holes that I have along down the entire bottom rails, um, where essentially these are just going to get bolted into, into this bottom half through these holes right here. Um, so that's kind of the thrust structure. It's very simple. All it's really meant to do is just kind of hold this, provide something to um, provide linear translation for the engine sled, and then in case if something happens, um, hopefully allow provide a little more structural support if this thing blows up this way, um, and it'll allow a little mounting points uh, for the piping right before it enters into the uh, the engine itself. So moving on, um, we got the blast wall, which is this um, yellow and red and black structure here. It's mainly primarily made from uh, steel one by ones. And sorry, I didn't mention that the thrust structure is made from steel four by fours, and they're about a quarter of an inch thick. Um, they're pretty much laughing at all every single force we've thrown at it, and we've uh, ran FEA for about 60 kilonewtons, so it has a safety factor of above five. Um, and it survives up to that. So that's so that's that part's really strong and really sturdy. And then we got the um, blast wall right here, which is number six. Um, <clears throat> go on. Yeah, which is this yellow and orange structure right here. And the importance of this is just to, in case if anything uh, vents from the engine or um, a seal breaks or something kind of explodes, nothing from the engine exploding area will go and hit the tanks or hit um, any more of the important piping that's over here, essentially. Um, and it's created right now to kind of hug the thrust structure on either side. It kind of gets placed down on there. Um, and then the front, uh, we're going to have to, we can either bolt it into the front here or weld it or something. Um, but I'd probably want to keep this thing be movable so then we can remove this um, and create more room for ourselves um, if we need to do more piping work and things like that. Um, and it gets bolted into the back here through these linear pattern bolt holes again. So it gets bolted in the back and then it gets bolted in the front here and then it's pretty much secure. <clears throat> and we did a small pressure test of two PSI on this applied everywhere from somewhere from having an explosive source somewhere around here so it's not it's not perfect but it's good enough to get us started and we can always find ways to reinforce this and hopefully get it to withstand uh, stronger forces we can always add linear like braces from this back section up to here if we, if we find the need to um, but we're gonna have to do some more uh, FEA analysis on this and, and try to rethink this part a little bit <coughs> But keeping in mind that we need to make sure that it doesn't interfere with any of the piping and protects as much components as possible. Um, moving on to the next part, um, we got our engine sled with the engine on it, which is right here. It's right here in the front. So as you can see, it's bolted through this face plate right here. Oh, where is it? Yeah, bolted through this face plate, through these holes around there. And it's just cantilevered um, connection right now because the engine's only, I think, 18 inches long. It's not, it's not very long at all. Um, and we can always add another um, mounting flange to the back here if we need to to add a secondary point of contact. Um, but it seems that this should be enough, um, but we'll have, to, we'll have to think about that a little bit more. But there's always room to add some kind of... Uh, part that holds up the back end of the engine, but just keep in mind that if you're going to do something like that We need to make sure that it can still the engine can still be taken in and out of this engine sled um, But as mentioned earlier this engine sleds uh, mounted to these linear uh, these linear bearings um, and These linear bearings are very specific uh, right now. We have some specific ones which can be found if you go in the GST um, drive you go to rocket test stand, you go to CDR files buzz. So this is the old one. This is the old one I prepared for the test stand back a few months ago. So a few of these parts have changed um, in this document. Um, but if you go to this GSD stand full master list, yeah, and it was done on, oops, 
Uh, well, I edited it November 22nd, so I think I probably did this in August or September. But essentially, it's it shows all the parts, uh, the quantities, and then down here, it breaks down what the part is, um, the, the part names and the part lengths, the quantities and the total lengths, and then I give a um, link to where we can buy them with a, a rough price. Um, now, some of these things, like the aluminum 1x1 one one extrusions, these are no more. We switched to 2x2, two two, so this is going to need to be updated for the current frame that we have. Um, punch 2x2 two two steel, these are used for the tanks, uh, for the tanks of the legs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, steel 4x4s four for the thrust structure, steel 1x1 one one for the uh, blast shield, and these are the sheet metals. Um, but the important stuff that I wanted to tell you was down here. So this is where you can actually find the length for the load cell that I was considering. Um, this is the XBD 10K load cell. Um, and then these are the linear rails that I wanted to show you as well. And so these are the ones we're choosing. And they actually have a bigger, heavier duty version. But this should be fine. Um, it's a 20-inch uh, rail segment with a, a coaster, and it has survives up to, I think, 150 pounds, no, 200, 210 pounds maximum loading capacity per one of these, and we're going to have four of them, so we're going to have a loading capacity of around 840, um, so that's going to be pretty good, um, but if you need links or uh, aid in, in kind of using, or help in determining what we kind of use for the sh uh, design. It's kind of all in this document, and I'd recommend that you guys make something new um, for the new GST stand. Just follow something similar to this, and it, you'll pretty much have everything you need. Um, yeah, and then this is the mini load cell, and then this is where you can find a whole bunch of different ones in the pricing over here. Um, so that's, that's the linear rail, and that's kind of the sled. And then moving on to the last few parts, um, we got this secondary tanks carriage over here. Um, this is kind of, this is just a random model I made based off of a um, those uh, K bottle um, cart wheel things. You can find these on Amazon, and they have wheels on them, and they can hold one or two tanks. Essentially, we're just going to buy one of those and use that. It's not going to look like this really at all. This is just a placeholder. So. Um, We'll have to find some links for, for these kind of things, and but they shouldn't be around 100 bucks and not too, not too problematic. And we just got to find a way to strap it to the side of the, uh, the, um, the test stand when we're ready to fire because we'll be wheeling this guy in and out when we're ready to test fire. Like when we're transporting, we'll wheel him off, um, detach him, detach all these tubes, wheel this guy off, put him in the transport trailer, and then cover this guy up, take off the sled, and then we can drive it to our test location. Last part is really the piping. Now this is really would be the piping and sensors and all the avionics equipment and stuff like that. And as you can see, we got our pressurant lines from our, these are our two nitrogen bottles and this is a nitrogen and uh, compressed oxygen bottle. Um, we're using these bottles to both pressurize and clear um, or and vent the tanks and the piping and the slash the routing and everything. So then in case we ever need to, we can abort the test with a, uh, with a purge of a non-reactive gas. So that's why we kind of chose these N2 bottles. Um, and as you can see, these pipe pads just go in, pressurize, come out, go into the injector here. Same thing with the locks. And then we also have these a few vent lines here and there for in case if there's over-pressurization, it'll just shoot out. Um, so that's kind of the overall, um, test stand. There is, there is some specific placements on these, on some of these parts. Uh, for instance, the tanks are placed directly over support beams. So then it has the maximum strength and it's not going to fall through the floor or do anything like that. Same thing with the jet A tank, uh, even though that one's kind of going through, whatever. Um, it's sitting on the surface right here. Um, and then this big thrust structure is also right on top of two support beams, which we're going to bolt into. Um, so those are important to, to note uh, because we're going to be bolting directly into these um, 
support beams and not just that thin plate because we want these parts to be as strong as possible. Um, Frame-wise, just kind of sits in there and then gets welded uh, to the base in place. Um, and the frame, I guess, doesn't really matter, um, but it'll, it can only really fit in one way. Um, and as for these guys, just make sure that one leg is on the center columns and then the other two are on the, the support horizontal beams. All right, so to cover, so that was kind of the overview, but I'm gonna kind of quickly go over what we had to change for the um, TRR that we just submitted. Um, essentially, what we changed is this sled. Um, it looked quite different. Um, this thrust structure, essentially we just made this piece a little taller um, because before um, it was four inches shorter, so this top cross beam was about here, getting in the way of these uh, mountings and these valves and everything. So we just raised that up. Um, and then for this blast shield, what we did is we flipped it around. Um, it didn't fit with the pipings the other way it was because it was flipped around the other way. Um, and there was a few mounting pieces like this bar was up here. Um, so we flipped it around and then moved a bar a little bit and it's and it fit it happened to fit perfectly with all the piping that we had. So that was good and we didn't have to change anything. Um, and yeah, and the main reason that we changed the sled is because we were finding that it was not surviving the the, uh, the forces that we needed to, and now it can survive, I think, around 45 kilonewtons force applied. Um, just some stress concentrations in the plate here and some of these connections. But all of, so all of these parts can be found, I believe, in the CDR... So we're gonna need to put a, a final place for this, but um, the one that, I, the test stand that I was using right here is my own one. So I might need to upload this and find a place for it in the drive. But for right now, there's GST, uh, TRR, uh, nope, not in there. Rocket test stand, final model. And then, so this has the change files, the final drawings. Um, this is the TRR final model. Um, this is <coughs> this is without the piping um, <coughs> because the piping was from Ryan and he had to um, go ahead and finish that. So I sent him over everything before he changed it. So this is everything but the piping. So um, we're gonna have to talk with Ryan and see if the piping, if he has the piping complete. Um, document or if I'm just gonna have to export this one that I have right here and find a place for it and it is, there is a potential that there is another location where all these files are I just do not know where because I'm not necessarily on ground uh, test stand anymore so I don't know where all the new files are um, so going off of that we might as well go cover the um, th the last few things that need to be done for this stand, and there's there's a decent amount that still needs to be done. Um, most notably, um, making and creating um, pipe uh, holders and joints for all of these um, piping placements, because we're we're gonna need little um, yeah we're gonna need little connectors, pretty much mounting them to the frame, mounting to them to the other components on the test stand and you're gonna have to use feel free to use existing um, geometries here or finding ways to bolt into these holes to create ways to grab onto the piping and make sure to keep them in place because what we're gonna have to do is make sure that these uh, these pipings when we're firing the engine that they don't shake apart so we're gonna have to have some kind of vibrational dampening on each of these mountings uh, for the piping so then they don't so say that some connections um, here or next to the injector don't become loose and don't vent out gas and cause an explosion that we don't want. So we're going to have to figure out ways to do that and probably do a whole bunch more research on exactly how to go about doing that. Um, but that is one big thing that we're really going to need to consider and especially is what are we going to do with these pipings once they're disconnected. Like if these are flex lines then we can kind of just 
throw them on the inside, strap them to a piece of metal and call it a day, put a cap on it and call it a day. But um, on some of these other ones, we're going to have to really do a few more considerations and, and think about how we're going to completely secure these to the, tank, uh, to the stand. Um, another thing that needs to be done is, once again, this frame needs to be uh, probably redone and added some um, supports to kind of help with the vibration uh, of this test stand. Because the thing is, even though this test stand is going to be raised off its axles by jack stands and strapped down with uh, steel cable straps over here in the corners and even maybe in the top if, if we find that it would be necessary, um, is that... Where, where was I going with that? Oh, yeah. So even with the vibration, um, we don't know is exactly how much is going to carry through to the rest of the, the stand, um, even if it's on those jack stands. Like, we don't know if all the vibration will be kind of withstood within this thrust structure or if it'll carry on to the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the frame, the rest of the structure, and cause this whole thing to resonate. So that's something we don't know, and we're just going to have to keep in mind when uh, continuing forward. Um, and the last thing that kind of needs to be added to this diagram or this model is where exactly we're going to be putting all of the avionics equipment, um, where are we going to be placing all the wiring, the control boxes, the test computer, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so that's where we're going to have to talk with a, uh, avionics a lot to determine exactly where all this stuff is going and what kind of power requirements they need and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, so that kind of covers the majority of the test stand. Um, if there's any specific questions, um, send me a message in Slack or throw it in the comments. Um, I'll try to answer it. Um, but your best bet is going to be to go to the TRR and read that because we redid quite a few sections. Um, so let me try to find where this TRR is. Uh, t -t -t shared with me. T -t -t -t. TRR. Okay, cool. So let's see. So if you go in the TRR, and I'll try to find the location for this, because it may have been moved from... The general team area. Oh, no, it's right here. Cool. Yeah, 270 pages. Cool. So, um, ground, uh, the ground test stand parts that have to deal with the actual components is right around, oh, here, right here. Yeah, I think this is the correct one. We've had so many different versions of this damn thing. It's been a little ridiculous. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, we got it. So it's this one right here. So we got finalized TRR number two, page 57. Um, page 56 is where it starts, goes over some requirements. And then, as you can see, as we scroll down, it talks about the test stand overall right here. Kind of what I've gone over this video is what all this is. Um, but if you're curious as to more of the design criteria behind everything, um, that's right here in requirements. And then if you scroll down, this is the frame analysis. These are the vibrational modes. As you can see, they're pretty low at 7 to 24 hertz range. Um, so we're going to try to need to get that into the hundreds or the high 80s, that kind of range. Um, covering options, this is for when we're transporting. Um, this is the test tanks. This is everything that kind of went into designing the test stand or the test tanks. Um, our original thickness calculations, our initial sizing calculations, um, overall drawing for the jet A, overall drawing for the locks, descriptions, and then this is the FEA analysis and the FEA setup and our results and talking about them. So if you're curious about that, just go in here. Uh, it talks more about the tanks and failure criteria. 
Um, and I did a video the other day about, or yesterday about this, about determining F, uh, yield stresses versus UTS uh, and determining exactly when something's failing. So um, I went a little more into that. Um, this is the piping, which is described here, and we don't have the, um, um, the blast wall here to make it a little more obvious as to where the piping goes. Um, thrust structure, the new thrust structure design requirements behind it, design, drawing, FEA, um, and et cetera. Blast shield, blast shield FEA, engine carriage with the thrust structure, and then the FEA. Close up, deflection, and then this is the test stand and anchoring, how we're proposing on putting everything together. And then this is the future work, which is kind of talking about the same things that I was talking about with the uh, propellant tubing, the frame, and the avionics equipment, as well as a little more stuff on the piping. So I hope that helped you guys understand a little bit more about the test stand. Um, and if you have questions, once again, just reach out to me, let me know. I'll try to clarify it. Um, but this is where uh, my kind of work on the test stand is kind of wrapping up and it's going to kind of transition over more to you guys doing it. So um, I'll be around and I'll be help. Uh, I'll, I'll help you guys out as needed, but I got to work on structure stuff. Um, so good luck is all I can say. And I'll see you guys later.